Hello, my name is Brandy Nicole, and welcome to another episode of His Grace is Sufficient podcast. It has definitely been a while since you've heard from me, and there are a number of reasons why that is so. Um, Now, let me preface this by saying that normally um, you would be listening to me read God's word because that was one that wanted that was my main focus for this particular YouTube channel was to read the Bible in full. Um, but every now and then I feel like, um, I want to sit down and talk to you, um, and be as open and honest with you about things that I'm learning in Christ, um, and things that, uh, maybe just need to be spoken about that, are in my life and maybe might help you as well, um, that are going on in my life and might be edifying to you, I should say. Um, but we want to focus on Christ, um, and his word. Now, the reason why that I haven't been here, uh, or one of the reasons is that I need to take a step back and reevaluate my life, um, as far as the, my gaming channel versus this channel. Um, I made a little short not too long ago about um, giving up my gaming channel because it was taking way more of my time than it should have. Um, I was making every excuse in the book to keep it. I was trying to balance it out and it just wasn't working. And I decided that living for Christ was more important than keeping my gaming channel going because I needed to be reading God's word more and more. Um, And I have been challenged and I'm challenging myself to do that as well as you. If you're not reading God's word consistently every day, um, and I do miss days, I'm going to be open and honest with you. I I do miss days. Life gets busy or I get lazy and I repent of that. I ask God for forgiveness for that because uh, I can find energy and time to do other things, but um, I need to start making God's word more of a priority in my life. And I have been doing better about that. And I pray um, that you are doing the same. Uh, So there is that. Then I also wanted to um, take a inventory of why I am doing this. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing this for selfish reasons, for gain, for popularity, to be counted in the cool kids club but to much make much of Christ. I wanted to make sure that I was doing this to edify the body, God's, uh, Christ, um, and honoring Christ. Let me rephrase that. I want to make sure that I'm edifying the body of Christ and honoring God in this because I don't want to do this for Brandy. I want to take Brandy out of it. And I ask God to decrease me as he increases in me. Um, but that's my main reason, two of my main reasons why, um, I needed to take some time and, um, be between, but I have been uploading little shorts here and there, um, as I've been reading and studying and I'm getting more into and more into studying. It is definitely not my strongest suit because I was never a good student. (laughs) I was, uh, studies came easy for me as far as like things like I learned things and it came easy to me but I was never good at being a studious student if that makes sense I didn't study okay let's just put it that way but I digress um so really the main reason why I wanted to come on here was because I feel like my lane is on this channel is for the newer um believer Um, And those who are non-believers, of course, as a Christian content creator, quote unquote, uh, we want to make much of Christ. We want to proclaim the gospel, uh, that the gospel go forth throughout the earth. Whether we say it or not, God's word is going to go out. God, the gospel is going to go out. Um, But as someone on YouTube, my main goal really is to focus on new believers and also those who do not believe and maybe those who are wrestling with it. Mind you, this is not by my own power, but this by the, it is by the grace of God that we are saved. It is by the grace of God that I'm even sitting here. Um, so I wanted to just quickly articulate to you or, or talk to you about the gospel in the, a very basic way because um, I'm not a person that can do this in, in 30 seconds or less or 60 seconds or less. I'm a rambler, as you could probably tell. So, I, But I wanted to... S- establish a foundation. And let me say this, if I say this wrong, 
um, please forgive me. Um, I expect correction because I am fallible. I am a human. I'm a sinner. Okay. And, um, I expect to, to mess things up, flub things up as they say. So if I say anything or misspeak, please, by all means, um, correct me, um, in love. I should expect the most loving thing that you would do as a believer is to correct me. And I expect the most loving thing that I can do and the, the, uh, is to accept that correction. Um, so what I want to do is talk about the gospel and make sure that we understand why the gospel is important, why, why it is necessary, because I didn't have a, a true understanding of it, um, a couple years ago. Um, and as I've grown in Christ and, and learning, I'm starting to see that I was completely wrong. Um, I thought the gospel was just the good news that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and that I would no longer need to go to hell. I also thought that all I needed to do was pray a prayer and then I would be saved. That was it. But looking back at my life, um, how I lived it, I knew I wasn't saved. Maybe I didn't know, but I thought I was. Sure, I believed that God existed. I believe that Jesus Christ existed. I believe that he was the son of God, but that was it. That's as far as it went. I had a very shallow view. And there were times in my life that I read the Bible and prayed and such. And um, I went through the motions. And I think a lot of it was kind of out of selfish reasons. And it, it was. Um, but this time around, it's different. I can't explain it to you. I don't know when it happened. To be honest with you, I don't have a date. I just know that I'm one of those COVID babies, as they say, COVID believers. Um, it was for selfish reason that I even looked to God, but it, by, it was by his grace that I even did it. It was by his grace that um, I am saved because it was nothing that I did. There was nothing that I can do to save myself. God's law shows us who we are. God's law, when I say his law, is 10 commandments. And a lot of us know God's 10 commandments, right? Those of us who are believers know God's 10 commandments. Even non-believers know God's 10 commandments. But if you've never read them, they're embedded in your heart. You know them. You know them. Um, it's written on every heart of every man and, and woman and child because we are image bearers of Christ. We are image bearer of God. Um, so Romans 2 and 14 says that for when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires and they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law, the law was given to, uh, the Hebrews at, in the old Testament, it was put on tablets and they knew the law. They, they read it. They, they had the books of Moses, books of the law, and they memorized it. They had it in, but we as Gentiles, um, who or the Gentiles in the Bible, or even us as Gentiles, we don't have, we, without reading the law, know it. Why do I say that we know it? Because you have moral, you have a moral law. You have a moral code, as they say. There are things that you would and would not do. You know not to steal. You know not to kill. These are part of God's law. These are written in your heart because you are an image bearer. You are created by God. You are God's creation. Right? There's a difference between being God's child and God's creation. We are all God's creation. But how do we become a child of God? How do we become sheep? How do we become part of the flock? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> but let me just go back to um, the law and what the law does. The law shows us that we are sinners. Without the law, we would not know that we are sinners. And in your heart of hearts, as wicked and deceitful as it is, we know that God exists. We know that we have offended him in a way, right? But the law shows us how we've offended a holy God. God is perfect and he desires, he demands us to live perfectly. And when we break his law, the wages of that is death. Romans um, 6 and 23 uh, says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Right? So the wages are what we deserve. Like when we work for a living, we get wages for that work. Same thing in 
in the spiritual realm, same thing with God. When we break his law, when we break his commandments, the wages that we earn is death. But there is there is a way out. Now, I will say this. Um, when I first, before I became a Christian, I had a very shallow view of the gospel, right? I told you that I just thought, oh, Jesus died on the cross for my sins and I can be saved. And I thought, what was I being saved from was hell. That was it. Very shallow, self-centered, selfish look on the death of Christ, why he died, why he lived on this earth. As I've um, grown in Christ and become a believer, I now know that we are being saved from the wrath of God. Because when we die, when we sin and our wages are being paid out, we suffer death and the wrath of God for eternity as sinners, as unregenerated sinners, as unrepentant sinners. But because of Christ, because he came to the earth in the form of man, lived a holy and perfect life, the life that none of us could live, none of us can live. And then he was beaten, whipped, scorned, hung on a cross. And on that cross, he suffered the wrath, the full wrath of God. And because of Christ's death, God's wrath was satisfied. We have in Christ become righteous because Christ is righteous and his righteousness as believers, as believers has been credited to our account, that account that was full of sin, that account where, um, once it was paid out, (laughs) our, our, we had a train ticket to hell has now been emptied and replaced has been has been credited with righteousness. So now we can live in Christ knowing that because of what he did, dying on the cross, raising from the dead and ascending into heaven, sitting on the right hand of God, that we are saved. We are saved, being saved and will be saved. Because you know that Jesus has returned, right? So that is my basic understanding of the gospel. And I pray, I pray that um, I was able to articulate that well. Um, and I hope that, I pray that if you are not a believer, if you haven't been saved, I implore you today to repent of your sins. Turn away from the life that you are living. Ask God for forgiveness and believe on Christ. It is by his grace that we are saved. It is by his grace. That is it. I would have never walked away from the life that I was living. I was an enemy of God. And do you know that? Do you know that if you are not, if you are not a child of God, that you are an enemy of God? Imagine being an enemy of the ancient of ages, of the one who created this world. Imagine that, being his enemy. Those of us who are not saved, those of us who um, are at enmity with God, I implore you, I implore you to repent. So that um, honestly was all I wanted to talk to you about today. I wanted to give you a foundation of the gospel. The gospel must be proclaimed daily. And as believers, we ought to be re- we ought to be proclaiming the gospel, preaching the gospel to ourselves on a daily basis. Um, and I need to do better about that myself. Um, and I do have a couple recommendations for um, those of us in Christ. And let me just let me just grab this book. Sorry about that. Um, walked away from the mic for a minute. But I was recommended a gospel primer for Christians by Milton Vincent. Um, it's a cool little book. Um, and it's written in a different way where you don't read it just like a regular book. You kind of flip back and forth between 
the different sections. And it's a great way to preach the gospel to yourself or learn how to articulate the gospel better. Um, and then I have a book from The Daily Grace. And let me see. It's a it's actually a study. Let me grab this. And it's called Preaching the Gospel to Yourself. Um, it's from The Daily Grace company and i really enjoy that little company um they have great little studies um if you'd like to journal like i do they have journaling items as well it's a it's sound and it's important by the way before i end this it's important that you get into a sound biblically sound church and what i mean by that is not your stephen furtick's not your um michael todd's Okay, not your Kenneth Copeland's or Patricia Shires. You stay away from those people. They are they are false teachers and they will lead you astray. Okay? You need to get into a biblically sound church. And if you're questioning what I'm saying, I can suggest a few channels that you watch. Um, and I'll link those in the description because those channels help me. Because uh, let me tell you something, I had it all wrong. Um and it could have been things that I learned from watching the Word Channel, TBN as growing up. I'm, I'm not even sure if these are all things that I learned going to the church that I grew up in. So I'm not even going to put that all on them, right? But it's definitely from reading things that I shouldn't have been reading, um, watching things I shouldn't have been watching uh, that were um, false. And I believe that. So um, I'm going to help out those who think that um, they're, they are... They know the gospel and honestly were led astray or taught wrong. So, and then those who are naysayers and want to call someone like me, perhaps a Pharisee. So, all right. Anyways, I'm going to link that and uh, link some channels for you in the description for you to watch. Also, um, The Daily Grace. And I think um, I got my copy of the gospel primer on either eightbooks.com or thriftbooks.com. I, I frequent those often because if you're in a tight budget like I am and can't afford to spend a whole lot of money on brand new books, um, there's nothing wrong with buying used books, well-loved books. So, all right. Anyways, I rambled. Sorry about that. I do apologize. My mind can go everywhere um, at once, but um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you understood where I was going with this. Anyways, I do pray that this was a blessing to you, that it was edifying and that it glorified God. Um, I pray that you continue in God's word. And if you're not, again, if you're not a believer, I pray that God graces you with the gift of repentance and salvation. Um, and let me know if this helped you in the comments, I really want to hear from you. Um, and I pray that I see you again soon. God bless you. May God keep you. Um, and I hopefully will see you again soon. Ciao.